Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to another video on the math channel. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. Pretty much, uh, the channel's blown up. Um, in this video, I'm going to be discussing why integrating a function gives us the area under a curve. So, this idea has been in the back of my mind for a very long time because I knew, like, I've gotten the basic definition that if you integrate under a curve, you're adding up a bunch of little rectangles. But then I got shown a different way to think about it. So when I was in school, I got told, all right, if you have a, a curve, something like this, uh, as a function, you can add up little rectangles together and you can sum them all up using this symbol. And then if you make the rectangle small enough, you can actually change this symbol to an integral. Now an integral is um, an actually a stretched out S and they use the word, um, the letter S for sum. So that's the way I was taught, but there was another way I also learnt the other day that I thought was really interesting and I would like to share it with you guys. So, integrating a function like this between two bounds is going to give us an area. But why? Well, consider this. So let's just take, let's say we had just a normal function on a x, y graph, um, x, y axis, okay? So this is x and this is y, okay? And this is your function, okay? Doesn't matter what it is, it's just some function. And let's say, all right, we want to work out this area here. So area from zero to uh, let's say x, okay? And let's say we had a function that determined the area here. So this area here was given by some other function. So let's say a, and if you input um, the x value into this particular function. So this is a different function, but if you put an x value into this function here, it will give you this area here, so this green bit here, okay? And now let's consider a bit. So if we were to extend this, okay, to some distance, let's say a really small distance h, so up to let's say here, where this would be, this distance here along here is h, and this would be h plus, x plus h, okay? So then the area up until this point here, so this whole blue bit would be um, the area, but you input instead of x, you put an x plus h, don't you? So if you input this point into this function here, it will give you that blue area, okay? Now, let's say we wanted to work out an expression for just this strip here, okay? So just this light blue strip here. Well. That will be this area, so this whole big area. Subtract this little area here, wouldn't it? So it would be a of x plus h minus a of x, okay? So that's our blue little area. Now, let's take a look at it here, okay? So let's just say we were zooming in on this rectangle here. So it looks something like this, doesn't it? Ooh. That's a terrible drawing. I'm just going to scroll down real quick. And let's make a better representation of it. Okay. So this is our little strip here. So this is our blue strip. Okay. Now, this distance here on this rectangle is H. But let's consider this, this little bit at the top here. Let's say we only wanted the rectangle up until this height here. Okay. What would this height be? Well, if this curve is F of X, the height at x is going to be f of x, isn't it? So it would be just normal um, f of x because input uh, um, an input and this is your output pretty much. So this is y equals f of x. So this height here would be f of x, wouldn't it? Okay. So now this, this is the area we're looking at here. So this green area just and up until this height here. So we're, we're ignoring this little bit here. This area here will be f of x multiplied by h, wouldn't it? Okay. Now this area here is going to be less than this blue strip, isn't it? So this is our expression for our blue strip. So f of x multiplied by h is going to be less than or equal to um, our blue strip here, because this bit is our blue strip, but this is a little bit here we're not accounting for, okay? Now, so this can be less than this expression here, okay? So far, so good. And now, let's take the bit now. Let's say we wanted to work out 
not pretty much this bit we wanted to look at this height here as well so the height up into here so this bit here would be what would that be that would be f of x plus h wouldn't it so this would be f of x plus h now this would give us the area of this so we're getting a bit more than our blue rectangle aren't we so what we can say here is that the area of this purple bit will be f of x plus h multiplied by h now this area here is going to be bigger than our blue bit so we can say that this here is um, less than or equal to f of x plus h multiplied by h now that was the hard bit getting this expression here so now I'm just going to remove, um, well not remove this, I'm just going to move this stuff to the side here because it's not that important anymore. Getting this set up was more important because we have a graph here. Okay, now we can see we have h here, we have h here, so we can divide, we have basically you have a triple inequality here. So if we divide by h on all three of them, we're going to have f of x a of x plus h minus a of x over h to f of x plus h now what we're going to do is basically we're going to apply a limit we want to basically make h we want this distance to be as small as possible okay now the reason we want to do this because if we do this then we'll have basically um a dash of x in our expression so if we apply the limit as h goes to zero if we apply to this side this side isn't going to change at all so that's still going to be f of x if we apply it here we're going to have the limit as h goes to zero of this expression here now i don't know if you recognize this but this is actually the first principles so in other words what we have written here is a dash of x and here this bit here so f of x plus h this bit is a bit funky so as h goes to zero this point here is going to travel along to become f of x isn't it so if we apply this limit to this bit here that's just going to be f of x and now we know this bit is f um, a dash of x so we can replace this as f of x Oh, whoops f of x is less than or equal to a dash of x so a dash basically means it might be written another way is um, the derivative with respect to x of a okay is also um, less than or equal to f of x now if something is less than or equal to f of x and something is also greater than or equal to f of x then f of x is equal to a dash of x so let's take this up here and what does this actually mean so our function this function here is the derivative of our area function so if we want to undo a derivative we have to integrate don't we so therefore the integral of f of x with respect to x will be a of x in other words integrating a function will give us our area function and then if you have these bounds a and b that will give you the area between certain points so integrating any function will give you an area function and if you plug in certain values you can work out certain areas so i thought that was quite cool intuitive way to think about areas under curves but yeah this was another way to learn. Another way you could learn it is like the rectangle method, but I think this one is this method is just such more intuitive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, like and share if you want more videos like this.